Flat Earth Clues Part 7 The Long Haul This is part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. This clue looks into a topic I only glanced at in the original guide, which is the Southern Hemisphere, or in the flat earth model, the land masses closest to the outer ring. I like to give credit where credit is due, and the long haul title was given to me by a fellow flat earther who did some of the same research I did. The summary of the video is this. If you are looking to show someone how to view the flat earth from a practical point of view, this is the example I would use. I'm going to show you how strange the world looks using just a few websites, some simple math, a couple minutes, and your brain. You don't have to write anything down, unless you want to, of course. I'll give you everything you need on screen and break down one of the examples as well. I'll also link the sites in the description for reference. First, here are some websites that help you calculate distance. The GPS on your phone already does this, and you may have an app as well, but here are some dedicated examples. Uh, Timeanddate.com tripit.com, distancefrom2.net, worldatlas.com, freemaptools.com, and travelmath.com. If your favorite isn't listed here, like Google Maps, then use whatever is most familiar to you. Now we are going to look at two specific groups of cities. The first group is going to be from the area around Australia, including New Zealand. We'll call this Group 1. Group 1 includes Melbourne, Australia, Sydney, Australia, Perth, Australia, Auckland, New Zealand, Christchurch, New Zealand, and Hamilton, New Zealand. The second group is going to be some cities in South America, all in the Southern Hemisphere. I mention this because if you go high enough, you will run into a few cities that won't work. Group 2 includes Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Brasilia, Brazil, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Lima, Peru, and Santiago, Chile. Again, there is a link in the description with many other airports. Now, these two groups are interchangeable, as you would imagine, so you can start or end with either group 1 or 2. The results will be the same, and just to make it interesting, I'll use a slightly different example which a fellow flat earther did the legwork on and show you that even these two groups aren't exclusive. So you take anything from group 1, and anything from group 2, and you get some distances, ranging from six to 8,000 miles, roughly. That's all I want you to do here, is get that part in your head, noticing that the root is bent, because they have to account for the curvature of the Earth. All these directions are what you would expect, a straight shot over the South Pacific Ocean. Now, just to prove it's not an exclusive route, instead of starting in, say, Rio and landing in Auckland, I'll start what should be the opposite side, in Cape Town, South Africa, which is roughly the same distance on a globe Earth coming in at 7,300 miles. Notice on the map it's still a straight shot through the Indian Ocean and not crossing any countries. An easy route. I try to book my flight. For this example, we use travel math, but you can use whatever is easiest in your country, like Priceline, Expedia, Travelocity. It will make no difference because they're all tied to the same system. And this is when everything goes wrong. So the first leg, the airlines don't send me due east, but instead shoot me 4,700 miles almost due north to Dubai. Okay, maybe we're just picking up people. Seems a bit excessive, but I'll go with it. I'm probably comfortable in my seat drinking vodka tonics anyway. And from Dubai, it should be a straight shot home to Auckland, right? Er, no. Now they send me southeast to Melbourne, a mere 7,300 miles. And then finally a third leg from Melbourne to Auckland coming in at around 1,600 miles. I'm rounding up or down to make the math easier. Regardless, the total miles for this flight is almost double what should be expected, coming in at 13,600 miles. In addition, the trip took me 37 hours. How long should it have taken? Well, in a 777, about 12. Now this is where you come in and say, well, 
it's probably an isolated incident or some strange connection thing. You know how the airlines are. Oh no, my friends. We can do this all day. This roulette table is rigged, and there is no way to get a fair game. The first part of the clue is the utter lack of non-stop flights from anywhere in this hemisphere, which is why I give you multiple cities in each group. And here's the plot hole for you. Flying from international cities like Sydney, Rio, Santiago, or anywhere else close by, you can't get a single non-stop flight, no matter how much money you pay. I tried to do this for an entire night, and it was like playing an online casino game, one that I was losing most of the time. The connections kept coming in like spam windows. Start in Christchurch, go to Auckland. Start in Auckland, go to Sydney. Start in Sydney, go to Dubai, or Los Angeles, or somewhere else that makes no sense. Some of these connections took the trip over 50 hours to complete. Go ahead, try it yourself. You may find one non-stop. But even then, the strangeness doesn't end there, because the speed is wrong. For reference, I included an optimum cruising speed guide from a commercial pilot's forum that lists all the international aircraft used in these routes. A 777, the current state-of-the-art flagship plane, designed for maximum fuel efficiency, has a cruising speed of 640 miles an hour. 7,400 miles comes in at around 12 hours. Try to find this route. It doesn't exist. It can't. The closest I came was a one-connection flight with a three-hour layover. The total flight time was 20 hours. 20 take away 3 is 17, not 12. And this might work if the plane was doing, say, 430 miles an hour. But it's not. In fact, the slowest cruising speed I found was an older Airbus just around 593. But this is all just numbers, right? It is until you pull up the flat earth map and look at the farthest two points, which just coincidentally are anywhere in Australia and most of South America. Or my example of Lower Africa, which you can see isn't west at all. It's a shell game, and a very good one at that. Keep people guessing with multiple connections and layovers, jumping from city to city. People just sit in their seats, trying to sleep through it. And then it hits you. Well, the pilots would know, right? They fly all day every day. Certainly, they would have figured it out by now. Some of them would get suspicious, sure. Any decent navigator will be able to work out the speed, fuel consumption, and odd connections. But imagine what they would have to get their head around. First, they would have to ignore the world GPS system that has been leading them to their destinations without error. If you want some interesting side reading, check out the link on the history of the GPS. And I quote, Developed in 1973 to overcome the limitations of previous navigation systems, integrating ideas from several predecessors, including a number of classified engineering design studies from the 1960s, oh, and by the way, was created by the Department of Defense, the same people that closed off Antarctica. GPS went fully live in 1995, so if you were a pilot before then, you might have been able to pick up a breadcrumb trail. After that, very difficult. Plus, let's say you did figure out that something was off. Who exactly would you tell? The FAA? You would be looking around and wondering why you were the only one to see it. And then what? You make the leap of faith and see that the entire map system is wrong? Never going to happen. You might as well just tell them that an alien spacecraft followed your plane around for two hours. We know what happens then. Start playing Flight Time Casino for yourself. See what interesting things you can discover. And while you're at it, show it to any pilots that you know. But don't forget to leave the words Flat Earth out. Because that's crazy, right? So do some of your own research and ask questions. Please feel free to email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net or 303-494-6631.